From cheater surveillance cameras, you are about to view actual true stories filmed live, documenting the pain of a spouse or lover caused by infidelity. This program is both dedicated to the faithful and presented to the false-hearted to encourage their renewal of temperance and virtue. Coming up on this episode of Cheaters. We have gotten intel from our detective. They're at an adult lounge. Is it? Is it? Is it? disregards both her and their daughter. Racked with heartache, Christina calls Cheaters to ascertain an answer. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. Yeah, it's been five and a half years. Things have changed dramatically. We used to have a really strong bond, intimate type of relationship. You know, we were really close. I mean, it was, there was a day that didn't go by where we didn't spend that quality time together in a relationship and it's just like it's it's just different now kareem age 45 a caterer accused of feeding his girlfriend a load of bull cheaters intelligence positions a squad outside the suspect's workplace sometime in the afternoon an unknown vehicle approaches and parks next to the suspect's car a while later, Kareem emerges from the office building. The suspect greets the driver, an unknown female, with a smile and a warm hug. Kareem puts his charge into his car and starts to get in himself. Then changing his mind, the suspect runs across the lot to a nearby liquor store. Yeah, Kareem is a good father, you know, but lately something's got him distracted. He's starting to neglect his fatherly duties. You know, he doesn't even see his daughter. She doesn't go to daycare, so... Most of the time she's home and he's leaving early in the morning, he sees her and he doesn't see her at night. You know, so he's just totally neglecting his time with his family. It's, it's, it's not like he's really neglecting her, it's just he's trying to make it seem like work is more important at this point. He's starting to keep secrets, he's not being very honest and very genuine about things and I know when he's lying. He, he can't lie, so I can tell something is going on, that there's a lot of space and a lot of distance between us, like we're kind of just falling apart. And he's just trying to lie to cover up whatever it is that he's hiding from me. And it kind of pisses me off, you know, because he always said that family was the most important thing. Kareem comes out of the liquor store with a package in each hand. He opens the car door and then gets in. The unknown woman kisses the suspect while stroking his bald head. Kareem's dome drops out of view. However, the suspect must say something funny because his guest laughs and smiles. Finished with a front seat wrestling match, Kareem climbs out of the vehicle and opens his lover's door. With his hands wrapped around the woman's waist, Kareem walks her to her car. The young lady responds with a passionate kiss. The suspect closes the unknown woman's car door, gets into his own car, and heads home to an unaware Christina. If Kareem is cheating on me, I'm done. We've been had the back and forth. I think, personally, our relationship couldn't recover from that because we're supposed to be best friends. And if we're supposed to be best friends, then I don't feel like you should lie to me or string me along if you don't want to be in a relationship with me. So I'm just not sure on how I'm feeling these days. You know, it's like we were on the right path towards our future, possibly having more kids, getting married one day, hopefully, you know? But now it's like we've done like a total 180. Cheaters investigators continue to stake out Kareem's place of employment. Near closing time, the same vehicle from previous surveillance arrives. Presently, Kareem materializes, greeting the driver with a kiss and gets into his own car. As Kareem takes off, the young woman follows. Ignorant of the cheater's tale that tracks them, the two timing twins drive through town and arrive at an almost empty parking lot. The young lady, now identified only as Tony, gets out to join the grinning suspect. Arm in arm, they cross the street. Kareem and Tony enter a lounge. After settling into a cozy booth, the pair spend some quality time conversing and cuddling. 
After some time, Kareem and Tony make their move out of the bar. Holding Tony's hand, the suspect escorts his sweetie back to her own vehicle. Kareem kisses Tony passionately. He closes the car door and sends his date on her way. As Tony drives away, Kareem gets into his own car for the drive home to a forlorn Christina. Cheater's agents continue the stakeout of Kareem's workplace. Upon finishing work for the day, the suspect leaves his office. Kareem travels through town with a cheater's detective covertly in tow. The suspect turns into a parking lot where Tony waits for him. Kareem gets out, goes to his companion's car, and greets his lady love. Holding hands, the pair walk across the street to a small restaurant. Inside, they sit at a small table. The suspect hugs Tony, and they share a few kisses. The kisses continue as Kareem and Tony get up to leave. With arms locked around each other, the suspect escorts his maiden back to her chariot. Not wanting to end the night, the lovers spend their last few moments together kissing by Tony's car. Kareem can't seem to get enough. The suspect gives Tony one final goodbye kiss. As Kareem jauntily steps into his car for the ride home, the cheaters team begin their final step in wrapping up the case for an inconsolable Christina. Coming up, the confrontation. After discovering the suspect's true nature, Cheaters makes the call to Christina to disclose the details. Worried about the loss of her relationship, Christina summons the strength to face the dreadful discovery. First thing I'd like to say, Christina, is thank you for coming out this evening. You know, I understand it was kind of short notice, but um, let's just get right into this. Christina, we begin our investigation outside of Kareem's workplace. A few moments later, we see this unknown vehicle park. A while later, that's when we see Kareem walk across the parking lot. You made out with some bitch in our car? And meet this female, yes. They make out, they kiss. He then this puts got to be kidding. in the passenger side of his Cadillac. Not before he says, hold on one second. He jogs over and runs into a liquor store. That's when we see him come out with some beers. Making out with this old one, I call. Yeah. Well, I gotta sit at home again. or ride the bus home from working. What the? So this is making sense. You see her laughing and stuff. I mean, inside of the vehicle that you two share together, correct? Exactly. This motherfucker talking about he working and he caking up with this hoe. Christine, I'm gonna stop right there because you can kind of see her face. Have you ever seen this woman in your life? No, I don't know that bitch. You don't recognize her at all. Nah. Okay. Continuing on with our investigation, Christina. On this day, we're outside of Kareem's workplace. A few moments later, that same unknown vehicle arrives. It parks. So they've been meeting at his job? At his workplace, yes. Mm-hmm. That's correct. Meeting at the job. That's when we see him come out dressed in all black clothing. He goes over to the Cadillac, gets in, and he drives away. That's when we see her vehicle back out, and she follows him. As our detectives tail the two of them, they drive for some time. Mm-hmm. As they follow each other, Cream gets a phone call. What you're about to hear is the audio from that phone call. Christina, tell me if you can remember this at all or even this day. Okay. Hello? Hey, baby. Hey, baby, how you doing? Nothing, just got out of work. Um, actually, baby, I'm trying to get there as soon as I possibly can. I've got a lot of people waiting to, um, sort of stop myself that I'm busy. So you should be coming home late again. Well, yeah, but I'm, I'm trying to make a living for us, baby. I'm trying to get it where it needs to be. Well, you know we only have one car. Yeah, yeah, I know. Obviously, you can see he's not doing what he said. Exactly. After finishing up the phone call with you, this woman, who's dressed very nicely, they go and they enter an adult lounge. That's when we get internal surveillance of the two of them sitting together. He just how lovey dovey caked up with this hoe. He is. They're the drinks together, they're kissing, they're being very romantic, almost like they, this has been going on for some time. I wonder if this bitch know about me and our daughter. And that's what we're going to find out. Christine, at this point in time, we have gotten intel from our detective. They're at an adult lounge. What? Together. So he's spending money with this hoe tonight, then? Yes, okay. that is correct. They're in an adult lounge together. If we get on the road right now, we can meet our detective at the location, get some intel, we can go from there. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Right this way, please. 
Let's look for our detective. He's really have spending time with some other woman when he has me and a three-year-old daughter at home. I just, I just don't get it. I just can't believe this. I'm pissed. I completely understand that. All right, we're just gonna wait on our detective. Sit here for a minute. Here's our detective right here. How are you doing, Gomez? Okay, they're inside. All right. The bottle of wine, they're drinking. They've been here for a little while. Let's go inside and get them. All right, you ready? Everybody out. It's a little dark inside. It's a little dark inside. Be careful. All right, follow me in. Let's go. Right there. Right here. Right here. Pissed off at him than I would at her. Got to ride with that bitch. 
Angered and disgusted by the events of the confrontation, Christina grapples with the consequences of losing her boyfriend. Later, Cheaters divulges how she deals with the pain. But now, meet Amber, a companion who comes in to explain her side about the time she was caught on Cheaters. Uh, Lamont and I were chilling at the lake after we had lunch. And we were just drinking, you know, not laughing, making jokes, you know. And all of a sudden, I hear banging on the window. <laughs> and it's his girlfriend, and my heart, like, stopped. And I was like, oh, my God, <laughs> you know, is this cheaters? What is going on? It was just so dramified. It's so hard to explain everything. It was very shocking the whole day. It seemed like something from a movie. What the? What the? Open this door. Open this door! Open the door! Open! Hey, wait, hey, wait! Open this door! Open the door! Open the door! Okay, I'm coming! Open the door! No, you ain't! Man, open this door! Look at you, calm down! Man, open the door! Unlock the door! Unlock the door! Unlock the door! Unlock the door! Me and Lamont's relationship was just friends. We were friends. We hanged out every now and again, you know, not all the time. You know, when I get free time, I might call him, hey, you wanna do something, you know? And, you know, you know, every time I call and say, hey, you want to do something, I want something in return, you know. My time is not free, he knows that. That's all it was. I didn't know, he never told me about a girlfriend. He's paid a couple of my bills, stuff like that. So it never was a problem to me. I don't know nothing about you, little mama. I met him at the bar, okay? He spent money on me, and that's it, that's all. I don't know nothing about none of this. All I know is he can't pick me up, and he gonna take me back where he got me no, from. he not taking all the you, rest no. of you know, this no, y'all trifle. This well, the trifle. Why don't you come look at the evidence? You know, I ain't gotta look at. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, if you didn't do anything wrong, why are you backing up? I'm not backing up. Yeah, you are. No. How would I go about not being another woman in the situation? I just can't believe everybody or what they had to say because I it, it was another girl that they were watching besides me. So you know, I didn't care about it because he wasn't my boyfriend, but. Still, at the same time, you know, I don't, I don't have anything against his girlfriend, you know, and he had me out there having to fight with her, you know, and stuff like that, and I really, you know, so I'm really not too much giving in to meeting anybody. I'm just sticking around with who I know. <laughs> Infuriated by the insensitive actions of the suspect, Christina and her daughter moved in temporarily with her family. Despite the situation, the suspect, Kareem, insists that no real damage has been done. The suspect denies that he still sees the companion. 
When questioned by Cheater's producers, the suspect's companion, Tony, refrains from answering more questions. <laughs> presented to the false-hearted to encourage their renewal of temperance and virtue. Coming up on this episode of Cheaters. What the f*** is happening? What the hell? What are you doing in my house? You're not worth it. You're not worth my time. Do you not have any remorse at all, Liz? Hey, 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 she's got Real a weapon. Reality Television is brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's private eyes on Cheaters. Berg's previously failed marriage has made him a bit shy concerning his current relationship. Red flags reminiscent of his previous union have begun popping up lately. This forces Tobin to come to the professionals at Cheaters for assistance in gleaning the truth. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. I don't know. I mean, I was married, um, and um, she, we had we partied a lot. Um, and that didn't work out. <laughs> it ended very badly. Um, and, you know, after that, I, you know, was hesitant to get into anything else serious for a long time because, um, but, you know, Liz came along um, and really kind of changed that for me. I mean, like, it was unexpected. I wasn't looking for anything near what she did. We thought it was going to be a fling. Um, and recently, it's just been kind of distant. Like, um, I don't know. It's just, it's just different. I don't. I see a change in the way that she looks at me. Liz Winters, age 24, a retail manager suspected of selling her boyfriend down the road. Cheaters investigators assemble outside the home the suspect shares with Tobin. After some time, a mysterious vehicle pulls up. The driver, an unknown male, gets out and saunters to the front door. The suspect greets the man at the door. Cheaters detectives watch Winters leave the house with her mystery mate. The suspect gets into the man's car as he holds the door open. A short pursuit by the Cheaters team ends up at a gun store. Winters and her partner enter the establishment. We don't really have those couple conversations. Like, you know, it's just like kind of small talk and like, oh, hey, you know, and like, and, it's, and the, the fact that she's just doesn't seem interested anymore. And, you know, that that's not... I'm, a, I'm not a focus of hers, like, every day, like, you know, it was. I saw that she was tagged um, on a social media site, and it was, um, I was able to save them because I didn't, like, she was tagged, she was when she was down with her family in San Antonio, um, and there was pictures of her with her family, and there's pictures of her with this guy that I don't, I don't recognize. I mean, and they're immediately taken down, um, almost immediately. I was able to save them to my phone real quick. Just, you know, the reason I did that is because I've been suspicious lately. I mean, it's... I've tried to con confront her without confronting her, I guess. I, I bring things up and I talk to her, but I haven't really thrown anything in her face. Um, I haven't showed her the pictures yet. I, you know, I, I, cause I'm not sure. I don't want to be that jealous boyfriend where it's like acting all crazy, you know? Um, I've had relationships like that where my ex was, she was psycho about the jealousy and like, I don't want to be that dude. The two meander slowly through the gun store. The Bonnie and Clyde wannabes check out a few firearms. Sometime later, the cheaters team spot the pair exiting the shop. Once again, the man holds the car door for his date. A short jaunt later sees the two back at the suspect's abode. 
Winters gets out, then leans back into the car to give the man a quick kiss goodbye. The suspect enters the home she shares with Tobin. The man backs out and drives away. You know, when you in you know, that relationship and you see that person and they look at you and you can see the love in their eyes and like the fact that, you know, they're there for you. You know, they are, they're there with you. You know, and it was just gone, like blowing a candle out. Like, it was just like a change. She has to be honest with me. I mean, I've been completely honest with her about everything, everything. Like all this craziness in my past that I'm trying to forget, you know, I've been honest with her. And I would expect that she would respect me enough to tell me if she's not into me anymore. Cheater's PIs keep watch over Tobin in the suspect's house. Sometime in the afternoon, the man from previous surveillance arrives and goes to the door. The suspect greets the male, now identified as Travis Edwards, with a kiss and a hug before allowing him to enter. A short time later, Winters and Edwards leave the house with a small dog. Pursued by a Cheater's mobile unit, Edwards drives to a nearby park. Holding hands, Winters and Edwards walk the dog through the park. The fraudulent couple find a quiet picnic table at which to sit. After some time, Winters and Edwards leave the table holding hands. The suspect and her man wrap their arms around each other as they walk back toward the vehicle. Winters and Edwards return to the house the suspect shares with Tobin. Winters kisses Edwards goodbye. Edwards walks the suspect to her front door. As the suspect's cohort leaves, Cheater's agents wrap up the day of surveillance. Cheater's private eyes continue the stakeout of Tobin and Winter's home. Edwards, showing no fear of being caught, parks directly in the driveway. The suspect greets her new man at the door. The pair hop into Edwards' car. Cheater's intel units follow the car across town to a shopping center. With their arms wrapped comfortably around each other, Winters and Edwards walk toward the ice cream shop. A few minutes later, the suspect and her beau come out with Sundays in hand. The duo find an empty park bench and proceed to enjoy their icy snacks. The romantic couple then enter a cinema. A couple of hours later, they emerge from the theater and walk back to their vehicle. Winters and Edwards drive back to Tobin and the suspect's house. The pair again hold hands and converse while standing by the front door. Winters kisses her long-haired lover. Finally, the suspect opens her door, kisses Edwards one last time, and disappears into the house. As Edwards turns to leave, Cheater's operatives also leave in order to prep their case file for an uninformed Tobin. Coming up, the confrontation. Now that all evidence of the suspect's secret liaisons have been confirmed, Cheater summons Tobin to a briefing. Enraged at the prospect of another failed relationship, Tobin nevertheless steps up to view the truth. As you know, we have conducted our investigation, Tobin, and before I show you this, I just want to forewarn you, you know, some people find this stuff you know, disturbing to watch, it'll upset you. It, it made you a bunch of different things, but what you gotta realize is I'm just trying to get you the truth. And that's what, I mean, is I have to have it, you know, I can't move forward in like a serious relationship without being able to trust her. Absolutely. Tobin, on this day of our investigation, we are outside of your residence. You yeah, see this red vehicle pull up, this gentleman steps out in a hat. Pause that, pause that, pause that. That, that is, that's that dude, that, that's the photo. From, from this is what was on social media. Like, this is the photo I was talking about. The guy that I mean, I kind of recognize, but I don't recognize as a member of her family. This is that guy. Yeah, that's him. Continuing on, he walks up to the front door and is greeted by Liz. That's when we see the two of them walk out. She locks the door. As our detectives follow the two of them, they arrive at a gun store. The two of them walk into the gun store and begin to look at a few weapons. That's crazy. She, uh, I mean, I tried to get a pistol when we moved in this house because you know, just for protection, and she was not going to have it. So she doesn't like guns? No, not at all. So this is completely not like Liz? <laughs> no, not at all. After finishing up the gun store, they walk across the parking lot. He once again chivalrously opens he the door for nice her. He is nice, too. And gets in the vehicle. They leave the parking lot. 
and he drops her off at home. Continuing on with our investigation, Tobin, on this day, we are outside of your residence. Yeah. A few moments later, that red vehicle arrives. That's when we see him. The guy again. Get out, walks up to the front door, Liz mm -hmm. appears, mm -hmm. and they exchange what? a kiss on the cheek and a hug. What was, okay. And that... he goes inside of your house. A few minutes <laughs> later, he emerges holding Liz's dog. Yeah, our dog. He escorts her in the vehicle with the dog, and they arrive at a park. They walk the dog together holding hands. Dude, that's that's messed up. Like we see them sit on a picnic bench together and this with is the just dog. Recently. This is recently. And during this time, Liz receives a phone call, Tobin. What you're about to hear is the audio from that phone call. Tell me if you can remember this day. Huh? Hey, babe. How you doing? I'm good, baby. How are you? Oh, I'm good. Um, I just came off work a little bit early. Um, and now I'm with you too. I was just decided to take Bella on a walk at the park by the house. I'm not going to exchange you out. Um, so, do you want me to maybe like, go get something to eat when I get home? Hey, that's home, too. I'll go ahead and head back to the house with Bella. Well, um, I'll see you soon. Alright, I'll see you when you're home, babe. Love you. Alright, love you. After she just hung up, she said, I love you, and that guy was right next to her. Well, yeah, he's, he's got to know, like, I mean, that's just, that just makes. It makes it open season. After finishing up at the park, they put the dog back in the vehicle, they leave together, and they return to your residence. That's when we see him open up the car door for her. She's holding the dog, and they embrace him with another kiss. He then walks her to the door, comes back outside, gets into his vehicle, I can't and believe. he leaves the house. Tobin, where would Liz think you are right now? Which things don't work. I mean, I was working late, because, I mean, I do, it happens a lot. You know, I just have to stay and take calls, these guys, but... I mean, yeah, she thinks it'll work. We have recently received some intel that the two of them are actually at your residence. As soon as we get to the location, we're going to be led to the front door. At that point in time, we'll make entry and confront the two of them. I um, can't wait. <laughs> understandable, can't wait understandable. To see the look on her face. I told you two months before I had to go that I was going to go to San Antonio. 
I know. You they, didn't they, ask right well, then, or else he obviously would have given you that time off. And how long, Travis, has this been going on for? A couple um, months at least. Outside. And what are your intentions with so Liz? Well, actually, I love her. So glad. You know, I want her to be with me. I'll just get my stuff, and you can have your little like, thing. Right, you can come oh, back oh, later oh, to get your stuff. You're oh, not getting your stuff with all these people in my house. You're not going to tell me to leave. Yeah, I can tell you to leave whenever the f I want. It's my house. What are you going to do? That didn't even make me. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, you know, security come, come, come here, come here, come on. I got you, I got right here. wall, people. But yeah, come on. <laughs> you feel like you've gotten everything that you wanted? No, all my stuff. I mean, I want to come back here. Stuff? Not while everyone's here, I won't. No. He's so upset right now. Like, do you not have any remorse at all, Liz? I do, but not for how he treated me. What did I do to you? What did I do? What, it's like what, talking what, to a brick wall. At what point in time did this mistake happen? I went out to one of my bars because I wanted to get away. I couldn't stay alone in the house, like always. Let's go outside. Let's go, Pete. Let's go. You got to give me more. Wait, no. This guy's. Are you sit on me? Are you the best round? Come on. Get on the ground. After the volatile confrontation, Tobin feels the need to reassess his relationship and his living arrangements. At the end of the show, Cheaters tells you what changes he makes. But now, Dean comes in to explain his side of the story about the time his fiance caught him on Cheaters. It was, it was crazy, you know, because I'm, I'm usually a drama-free dude. So for your boss to come in and he don't know what the hell happening and, he, and he, he's seeing these two women uh, having a discussion and then you right in the middle of the discussion, you know, you're at your workplace, this is how you make a living and you get busted with four and five cameras. It's pretty damn embarrassing because I tried to laugh it off, but I was like, <laughs> woo, <laughs> it's going to be some going down right here. She putting $10 on pump five, and uh, she bent over in her ashtray to get the rest of the change at the ashtray. So I politely came up behind her and started talking, and, uh, you know, we even wind up eating. I've never ate pizza at a funeral in my life at a funeral home. I thought that was kind of uh, romantical crazy, but uh, she was a nice little jump-off piece, man. Wasn't nothing serious. Did he lock it? It's, lo it's locked? Is it locked? Yeah. He it's locked it. It's cow with wuss ears. Do you got a lot of people out here looking at you with this locked door? Are you just sitting right there? You are just sitting right there, aren't you? Get a shot of us. He's sitting. Open right the there. door. We got pepper spray and tear hey, gas. Your choice. Come on, come on. We got to finish our lunch. Put her hands on you. Come on, we got to finish our I got security out here. I promise. I ain't gonna talk to we'll you. We'll step away from the door. Back away from the door. Back away from the door. Let him talk. Come on in. All right, let's speak like rational adults. Can we do that? You guys have been together for four and a half years. Did you just make a calculated mistake? Because I, this is a very forgiving person. I don't understand what happened. It was just Everyone makes mistakes. It's okay. I think I believe in very next relationship. You know what I'm saying? If I if I can't really be faithful, per se, I think I just be by myself. That way I can just kind of 
do what I want to do, do my own thing, and don't nobody else have anything else to say. That's, you know, to be truthful with the matter. You know, that way I can do my own thing, ain't nobody tripping. Everybody know what's going on, and you can't, and I won't get caught on cheaters. Dismayed at losing his girlfriend, Tobin Burke agrees that perhaps his previous reluctance to a relationship was the best planned after all. Tobin admits he can't stop thinking about his former girlfriend. However, he also states that going back to her cannot be an option. Offended by the consequences of the confrontation, the suspect, Liz Winters, spits anger at Cheater's producers, exclaiming, I can't believe you guys would violate my privacy like that. You can't just waltz into my home with all those cameras. Who the hell do you think you are? He couldn't come to me and ask if I was unhappy. No, he had to go behind my back and bring cheaters into our life. The suspect's companion would only admit that he still sees the suspect. dedicated to the faithful and presented to the false-hearted to encourage their renewal of temperance and virtue. Coming up on this episode of Cheaters. decides to come to Cheaters. Distraught over his girlfriend's recent change in personality, Byron seeks answers from the professionals at Cheaters. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. Well, you know, we were in high school. We were high school sweethearts. You know, I thought she was the world. You know, I would basically give her anything she could possibly want if I could get it. But for like the past six months, for some reason, I just have suspicion. Ladacia Robertson, age 20. An unemployed woman accused of using her feminine wiles to get her buzz on. Briefed on the facts of the case, Cheaters dispatches a unit to the residence the suspect shares with her parents. The suspect, Ladacia Robertson, leaves home texting on her phone. After a few minutes, an unknown vehicle pulls up in front of the house. The suspect gets in and the car drives away. Followed by the cheaters team, the pair stop at a nearby grocery store. A few minutes later, the suspect and her mystery man emerge from the store. The pair hop into the car and drive away. She's always claiming she's busy for some reason, when she doesn't have a job. And it's hilarious because she's always saying it's with her family. But the funny thing is, when I call her family, when she's supposed to be with that family member, her mom, her aunt, or what have you, I'll call just to, you know, touch base with her, make sure everything all right. Can't get in contact with her. So I get worried, I'll call. Hey, have you talked to the Lacia? Oh, no, I haven't talked to her. What do you mean you haven't talked to her? She said she was with you. Oh, well, she ain't been with me all day. But I'm like, man, where's she been at? When I finally get in contact with her, she was like, well, I was at my partner's house. I had to help him install this computer. Da, da. You don't even have a job. Did he pay you? Nah, he didn't pay me. All right, whatever. 
Then she comes home with a big, you know, bag of smoke. And I be wondering, like, how you get that? Oh, he did. He gave me this for installing a computer. Nah, you ain't get that from installing no damn computer. Hell no. Nah. Because they, if they install a computer for that, I, where can I install some computer? The vehicle arrives at an empty parking lot. Within minutes, Robertson engages her consort on her knees. After some time, the suspect stands up and hugs her companion. The pair get into the car for a short jaunt back to the Robertson residence. The suspect kisses her secret lover. When the two finally separate, the unknown male leaves and Robertson walks inside. I really want to build something with her. I want to build a family with her. You know, have a big house, three car garage, have some little ones running around. But for some reason, we're not seeing eye to eye right now and I'm thinking something going on. I can't really put my finger on it. Like, I just know it's somebody else. Like, I just got a feeling. She don't act the same towards me no more. She, the same feelings that we used to have, she doesn't have them. Like, if I tell her I love her, yeah, all right, I'll yeah, back at you. Like, when did that start happening? Like, that, that just makes me feel like there's somebody else. Like, I'm not the only one in the picture anymore. Cheater's detectives continue to stake out Robertson's home. After a while, Ladesha emerges to meet with the driver of the white sedan. Robertson and her illicit lover drive to a nearby museum. Now, the odd thing that Cheater's investigators note seems to be that the museum is closed. The empty parking lot serves a far different purpose, however, mainly as a play area for the suspect and the driver, now identified as Damien Franklin. After the conclusion of her lusty activities, Robertson pulls up her shorts and gets into the passenger seat of the vehicle. Franklin returns Robertson to her residence, where the suspect passionately hugs and kisses her bow. The two then part ways. Franklin leaves and the suspect enters her home. The stakeout of Robertson's family home continues with round-the-clock surveillance by Cheater's operatives. Once again, Franklin picks up Robertson. The pair, followed by a tailing cheaters mobile team, arrive at a taco stand in the area. Robertson and Franklin stand at the window ordering their food. Franklin sits on the hood of his car as they both eat. Afterward, the forbidden couple leave. Franklin follows his motif and drives to an obscure, empty parking lot. Franklin passionately hugs the suspect. Then the fun becomes vulgar as the pair continue to have intercourse on the hood of the car. Sometime later, Franklin lifts the suspect off the hood. Robertson then gets into the vehicle alongside Franklin. The suspect and her companion drive back to Robertson's residence. As the partying pair end their day, Cheater's operatives begin theirs, collating all the case facts for a bereft Byron. Coming up, the confrontation. suspect's indiscretions fully exposed, Cheater summons Byron for a case briefing. Despite his insecurities and deciding that knowing is better than not, Byron prepares to face the truth. First thing I'd like to say, Byron, is uh, thank you for coming out today. I understand that you and your significant other have been going through some hard times. Yeah, I haven't finished this piece. With that being said, Byron, as you know, we have conducted our investigation. Before I show you what we've come up with, I want to warn you that some people may find this disturbing. It may upset you, but it's just to show you, you know, the truth and what's going on. All right. We begin our investigation outside of her family residence. You recognize that house? Yes, I do. That's what mom says. All right. She leaves her mom's house. We see Ladesha walk outside. This white vehicle pulls up, and she gets into the passenger side, and her detectives follow. That's when the two arrive at a store. We'll stop it right there. Do you recognize that gentleman? Yeah, that's one of my partners. That's one of your partners? Yeah, that's one of my friends. Really? Who is that? That's Big Diamond. So his name's Damien? Yeah, Damien. So you know him? Yeah, I know him real good. Short time later, after going into the store, the two of them emerge, they get into Damien's vehicle, and they leave. As our detectives follow the two of them, they arrive at this parking lot. That's when we see Damien get out, 
and I don't know if she dropped something, but I see her head moving in a certain manner that... Oh, did, nah, is she, is she on her knees, man? Yeah, you could... I could see it right there. How do you feel about seeing this? Man, 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 bitch. That's probably my partner. They, they hugging right there. They're hugging and kissing. They embrace. After she's on her knees for some time, they get back into the vehicle and they leave the parking lot together. They return to her mother's house. That's when we see them get out of the vehicle. Damien hugs this woman. So this is what she's doing all day while she's supposedly ripping and running from her mom. Yeah, she's been lying to you, as you can see. Continuing on with our investigation, Byron. On this day, we are outside of Ladacia's family residence. A few months later, we see her walk out, Damien already waiting. She gets in the passenger side of the vehicle, and they drive off. As our detectives follow them, they arrive at a taco stand. They get out, walk up to the window, and order some food together. During this meal, Ladacia receives a phone call, Byron, and now. I want you to tell me if you remember this. Hello? Hey, baby, what you doing? Nothing, just out at the store doing something for my mom. Yeah, what y'all about to cook? Nah, she got me getting her some medicine or something. Yeah, you want to go there tonight? I do, but I don't think I'm going to be able to. Why not? I told you. Oh, you going to be doing neighborhood driven and running? Yeah. I guess I'll call you later on, I guess. Maybe it'll be free. Yeah, hopefully I will. All right, I'll talk to you later. All right, then. All right, love you. Love you, too. Was she over here eating tacos with this? Hugging him, too, as she was on the phone. After finishing up the phone call and some tacos at the taco stand, they leave, they arrive at another empty parking lot, and that's when we see her sitting on the hood of the vehicle, big Damien, embrace her with a hug, and that's when things get a little bit more serious. That's when we see the two it's of them. In an empty parking lot, though. They're in an empty parking lot engaging in. But you couldn't go out with me, but you want to be in an empty parking lot. Yes, engaging in sexual intercourse on the hood of his vehicle. I told her how I've been done in the past, told her I've been cheated on, and then she turned around and did the same damn thing. Well, after finishing up on the vehicle, they leave that parking lot, and he returns her to her family residence. That's when we see him hug her, slap her on the behind right before. She walks inside. Damien leaves. Byron, you know what you've seen. You obviously know what's going on. So listen, they're together at a park right now. If we get in the vans, get on the road, we can go confront them. Are you ready? Yeah, I can go. I'm ready. All right, let's go. Right this way. Go around by that trash can, that green trash can. Go around by Right there, right there, man. Can I talk to you? Why is your top off, Ladesha? You gonna be my partner always? What the f you mad for, bro? What the f you mean why I'm mad for? I'm with you. Museum, because 
engaged in sexual intercourse on the hood of your vehicle. Disgusted by the actions of the suspect, Byron heads down a road of indecision. Later, Cheaters updates you on his final resolution. But for now, Vanessa Upton returns to Cheaters to inform how she is faring since catching her boyfriend with another woman. I was upset when I saw him with another woman, specifically someone that I knew. And so when I saw them together, I just felt hurt and betrayed. 
and just felt like my whole world was crushed because I thought we had a future and a life together. Here I am. I thought you were working. What the? Hey, I, I just, we just went out. Just went out. We just went out. Sorry. Hey. spoken with him since he's tried calling me a few times but I haven't answered I don't want to talk to him I'm completely done so maybe he's still with that girl maybe they're happy I don't know this wouldn't have happened if he would have just been truthful and honest with me now the public knows who he is that is my man right there cheating on me and having to end things that way it all worked out in the end I've moved on and I'm so much happier now so all in all I think it was a good thing that this happened dismayed at the suspect's actions and attitude, Byron Halpern has chosen to break things off with the suspect. As for the suspect's part in the affair, Ladesha Robertson denies having meant to hurt Byron's feelings in any way. Ladesha feels that Byron will come back around sooner or later. When questioned by Cheater's producers, Damian Franklin refused to comment on the case. <laughs> Remember, if you don't get your programming from Goldstein's, why we'll both lose money.